Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Welcome to Learning World. In this week's show, we're looking at the important and various roles food and nutrition can play in education. As ever, we'll be travelling around the globe to bring you those stories. We head to the United States, which is considered to have the world's worst obesity problem, and look at a project in New York to try to help reverse that trend. We go to France to see what's going on at the top end of the gastronomy scale, visiting one of the world's best culinary schools. But our first story takes us to Argentina and the Mi Huerta project that is teaching children about nutrition, sustainability and how to grow their own fruit and vegetables. A country of 40 million inhabitants, Argentina produces enough food for 350 million people. But despite that, many, many children suffer from malnutrition. The program Mi Huerta, My Kitchen Garden, aims to set up and develop allotments in schools around the region. There's a dual aim, to meet the nutritional needs of the children and to show them how to live in a sustainable way from the earth. The San Antonio de los Cobras School in the Andes is an example. This project was the initiative of one of the teachers, so that the children could eat lots of vegetables and then take that knowledge home with them so that they could learn how to grow their own food and love life. Noel's 11. He'd like to see every family in his village with its own garden. We grow lettuces, beets, cabbages, we take all these vegetables to the school canteen to help the children from the country, whose families are a long way away. And for us, the fact of feeding ourselves helps us psychologically, physically, and it's good for the school. Since 1999, several primary schools in poor and rural areas of Argentina have been allocated a hectare of land to grow their own food, thanks to this project. And growing vegetables here at an altitude of 3,700 metres is quite a challenge. We want this to have a knock-on effect so that afterwards, at home, they can carry on despite the arid soil. They come here and explain to me all they've learned. They say, Granny, you need more compost. You have to put this little plant here. You need to water them like this. Take care of the environment. Don't pollute the rivers or the air, because we all need a clean environment. The hands-on program of Mi Huerta seems a million miles away from the urban jungle of New York, but they do have one thing in common, learning about fresh produce. That's at the core of a new project in the Big Apple. Its aim to try and combat obesity. Yeah. Even if you have not much fruit, you want to display it all together in one place, because people never want to buy the last fruit. Adam is teaching Eddie how to taste, sell and preserve fresh fruit. Eddie's shop is one of the little stores or bothegas where the city of New York is trying to educate people about good food under the Healthy Bothega Project. Here in Bedford-Stuyvesant, limited access to healthy food, low income and poor education come on top of a traditional fatty cooking. In black neighborhoods, we do our own thing. Soul food, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Soul food is come from a lot of the things that were left over for black people to eat during slavery. So a lot of the stuff that we make is things that ne isn't necessarily the most healthy for you, but it's what we had and we made it into part of our culture and really, really good food. Here, 80% of local food vendors are Bothegas, little corner shops mostly owned by Hispanics. Fewer than one in 10 carries any form of leafy greens. I think he's one of the only bodegas in the neighborhood who's actually making a concerted effort to like really bring healthy foods to the neighborhood. These are Niagara, right? Eddie Figueroa from Puerto Rico is one of the 250 bodega owners in New York that are taking part in the Healthy Bodega Initiative. Eddie now organizes tastings and cooking sessions in his shop. We 
y'all making the people or the kids that come in here more alert that it's better to eat healthier than eating junk food. We see people are getting fatter and fatter and walking around with cardiovascular disease, more diabetes, um, and all the emotional um, you know, stressors of being overweight. We have to do something about it because it has become an epidemic in the States. Healthy Bothega is one of the many projects carried out by the city in cooperation with local farmers' organizations. We're crossing continents now over to Europe to visit one of the globe's gastronomy capitals to get a different perspective on food and education. Lyon in France is home to one of the world's most prestigious culinary schools, the Institut Paul Bocuse. We take a look. It's the hustle and bustle of a top-end restaurant. Only this chic venue tucked away in the 19th century castle near Lyon is actually a school. The scallops are real and so are the clients who pay 30 euros to sample the students' attempts to cook Michelin-starred dishes. The brainchild of French superstar chef Paul Bocuse, the Paul Bocuse Institute offers students first-class training at a cost. A year's tuition is 10,000 euros. But there's no shortage of candidates. Bien manger, c'est une question d'éducation. Oui, c'est une éducation. It's an education, an education of the palate. I think today's younger generations have understood this. All education is an effort, but at the end, there's the joy of the discovery of a taste, the joy of sharing, the joy of a meal together. The Institute wants to encourage children to eat more green veg. It looks as if familiarity is a determining factor in the choice of food by children. If you offer small portions of different vegetables every day, children gradually get used to them and stop being wary. Nearly half of the students here come from outside France, but it's an exchange both ways. These students bring their culinary tastes and ideas, and the result is a very interesting melting pot. I'm from Brazil, and I'm actually a psychologist there. And I did a career change like a year and a half ago. I enjoy very much being in the kitchen and learning. It's very cultural. I plan on going back to Brazil after I finish this. With the techniques I learned here, I can use the Brazilian ingredients because I like the food from my country very much. There's no doubt that these professionals will be in high demand. The school claims 100% of its graduates find work within two months. But to become chefs, they will still have to prove themselves. We hope you've enjoyed this week's show and we'll be back as ever next week for more stories all about learning in the 21st century. And remember, if you'd like to see any of our stories again, please visit our website at euronews.net slash learningworld. See you next week. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.